This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. I am glad you're here. Tesla held its annual shareholder meeting this week, an event that Tesla is now calling the Cyber Roundup, and as usual, lots of things of note took place. First, Tesla's shareholders approved Tesla's proposed three-for-one stock split, which is likely to take place in the next few months. But Tesla shareholders appear to have rejected a proposal for the company to improve its reporting and transparency when it comes to supply chain ethics, as well as reporting sexual, racial and gender harassment. When proposals calling for Tesla to improve its transparency were laid out, the crowd in attendance, mostly retail investors, were derisive and disrespectful to to those making proposals, something that seemed to please Elon Musk and gave the event a bit of a political party vibe. Closing the event, Musk hinted at more gigafactories, said we'd see major updates to the supercharger network soon, and teased a new Teslabot prototype. Lucid Motors published its second quarter results this week, showing growth in deliveries, but also issuing some stark warnings about its expectations for the rest of the year. The automaker delivered 679 Lucid Air sedans in Q2, up on the 360 deliveries of the first quarter. But while demand remains strong and Lucid states more than 37,000 reservations to date, it has halved its 2022 production estimates, citing massive supply chain constraints. Having started the year promising between 12 and 14,000 deliveries, this new estimate, 6 to 7,000, is a serious blow to the company. That said, the company says it has $4.6 billion in cash, cash equivalents and investments, so it should have enough money to help it weather this particular storm. After slashing prices of its Bolt EV and Bolt EUV earlier this year, Chevrolet promised customers who purchased their cars last year that they'd be able to claim a rebate to bring the price they paid in line with a new pricing structure. But documents published online this week suggest that GM first wants those eligible for the rebate to sign away their right to sue GM or LG Energy over the now famous Bolt EV battery fires and subsequent recall campaign before they they're then given the rebate. GM helpfully told Jalopnik, who covered the story, that the waiver doesn't cover future recall campaigns, but as YouTube law expert Steve Leto hinted on his YouTube channel, that's some pretty cruddy behaviour on GM's part. If you haven't watched his video yet, I highly recommend you do. I'll put a card up for you to watch it. Bad move, GM. Bad news. Ford published its July figures this week and confirmed that it's now delivered Ford F-150 Lightning trucks to every single US state, including Hawaii and Alaska. With overall new vehicle sales figures rising by 36.6% year on year, July's sales figures for the Blue Oval were up 7.7% from June, with a total of 7,669 electric vehicles delivered. This gave Ford a 10.9% EV market share during July in the US, chipping away at Tesla's market dominance, which, even after that, is still at 60.9%. Of note is the fact that Ford said it delivered 2,173 F-150 Lightnings during July, a figure that shows Ford's delivery figures are significantly better than many of its rivals into a new electric vehicle production schedule. BMW has officially expanded battery module production at its Leipzig facility, adding a second shift to help it meet production demand for its electric models. The shift adds an additional 250 jobs to the factory, taking up spaces previously occupied by the i3 battery production line prior to the end of i3 production earlier this year. BMW says that the expansion is essential to helping it increase production volume of the i4 electric sedan, not to mention prepare the facility for the launch of the successor to the Mini Countryman, a model that will begin production next year and be offered with electric drivetrains alongside more traditional internal combustion engine variants. It's important to note that while battery modules and battery pack production takes place in Leipzig, BMW does not yet make its own cells, relying instead on Cattle and Samsung SDI.
Sticking with batteries, LG Energy is back in the spotlight again after another Jaguar I-Pace EV seemingly caught fire on its own while parked inside its owner's garage in Florida. So far, four Jaguar I-Pace models have caught fire in recent months, with symptoms eerily similar to those experienced by Hyundai Kona EV and Chevrolet Bolt EVs, which suffered spontaneous battery pack fires last year. In this case, the owner noticed strange sounds emanating from their car, saw smoke coming from the vehicle, and decided to move their car outside to protect their home. Whereupon, the vehicle burst into flames. Nobody was injured, but it's our opinion that given the majority of EV battery fires appear to be centred on electric and plug-in hybrid cars whose battery packs are provided by LG Energy, the problem is a systemic one at LG Energy, and it needs immediate attention. As many of you will know, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is currently embroiled in a particularly nasty court case with Twitter over his attempts to pull out of a deal to buy it. So far, the case has involved plenty of counterseeing from both sides, and as court documents detailed earlier this week, allegations that the tool Elon Musk used to figure out if accounts were bot accounts or not had actually labelled his own account as a bot. However, that's not why we're covering this court case here. The fact that Tesla is now embroiled in the case is. Twitter has just subpoenaed Tesla with 27 requests relating to Musk's internal communications relating to the Twitter acquisition, conversations he had with fellow investors with connections to Tesla, and financial documentation showing how Musk planned to leverage Tesla's value to buy Twitter for $44 billion. Lordstown Motors may not have had a single vehicle in the hands of customers yet, but this week it published its second quarter earnings and showed a profit for the first time in its history. You might be curious how an automaker that hasn't actually delivered a single vehicle has turned a profit, but the secret lies in the sale of Lordstown's production facility to Foxconn during the second quarter. While Lordstown purchased the facility with the intent of building its endurance pickup in-house, changes in management and financial constraints led the company to first sell the facility to Foxconn for $101.7 million and then to sign a contract manufacturing agreement with Foxconn gone for it to produce the endurance for Lordstown at the facility it just purchased. Yes, it's a bit convoluted, but the books don't mind. Lordstown says Foxconn will begin manufacturing the endurance for it this quarter. Super Cruise, GM's hands-off, semi-autonomous driver assistance system, has been growing in capabilities and popularity over the last few years. Initially offered in Cadillac models, it's been gradually popping up in brand new cars from GNC, Buick and Chevrolet too. Like Ford's Blue Cruise, Super Cruise's hands-free mode only works on divided lane highways and freeways that have been mapped by their respective automakers. But this week, GM announced a doubling to the number of roads in its Super Cruise system. Now more than 400,000 miles, 644,000 kilometers of roads in North America will be drivable with Super Cruise engaged, with even remote West Coast cross-country arterial routes, which had previously not been well covered, now Super Cruise ready. We'd expect Ford to follow suit with an update very soon. We've known for some time that BMW has been readying a new platform that it will use to bring next-generation battery electric models to market from 2025. Known as the New Class Platform, that's the new new class platform because there was another platform with a similar name way back when, BMW expects to bring all electric sedans and SUVs to market built on said platform to cross shop against Tesla and other high-end rivals. But what we didn't know until this week's half-year earnings call was that BMW also plans to bring hydrogen fuel cell models to market using the same platform. Talking to investors, BMW chair Oliver Zipser called hydrogen fuel cell tech the, quote, missing piece of the puzzle that can complement electromobility in places where battery electric drivetrains are unable to gain traction, end quote. I would love to know if you agree in the comments below.
Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are and you live in New Zealand, there is no better place to check out than our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It helps you pick a car that's right for you, includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging from clean green energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. A few weeks back, we told you that Tesla had ceased taking new orders in North America for its solar roof products, something which at the time we presumed was to help it deal with backlog. But this week, we learned that it has just launched a new version of its solar roof tiles, version 3.5, which it's begun installing at employee homes as part of final validation and testing. While the exact specifics of the roof haven't been detailed, Electric said this week it believes that Tesla is likely focusing on durability and ease of use when it comes to this new incremental update to the solar roof tile product. Given that Tesla is constantly iterating the solar roof design, we think it's only a matter of time before we see the version 3.5, or maybe even version 4.0, launch on customers' roofs. Until then, we'll keep our ears to the ground for more info as it becomes available. And finally, San Diego solar electric startup Aptera Motors dropped some new teasers late on Friday ahead of the planned official reveal of the Aptera Gamma prototype next week. But ahead of that reveal, company co-founder and CEO Chris Anthony was in Taiwan visiting Formosa Adv Energy Technology Corp, where he was following up on a new agreement by both companies to see Aptera buy batteries from the company for use in its solar electric car. We've got to admit that this particular news caught us off guard quite a lot, as Aptera recently signed an agreement with Chinese base Eve for battery cells for its vehicles. But it could be that the company is either signing multiple supply contracts for different capacities or is ensuring a consistent supply of cells. Either way, either way, combined with the campaign that Aptera has to try and get the US to adopt Tesla's supercharger as its preferred charging standard, something that I, as a reservation holder, am not personally on board with, Aptera is definitely staying in the news. And on that note, we are in fact done for today. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't, please consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make that switch and you will be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power to keep the land beautiful. I'll be back with more awesome content very soon, as all the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's been busy driving Teslas this week. I've been busy driving Hyundai Ionics, and we'll be back next weekend for our usual roundup show. So enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.